Shoo! How's it going, folks? Welcome back to another episode. Today, we got something. Well, we're not really sure what's going on. We, we are prepared for anything. Right now, I am with Slam. Where's that, where's that cute little face? There's that guy right there. He's sitting over there. We got Slam and on board, and it's just him and I, and we're on a mission. We don't really know what that mission is. We got a lot of options here, but it is really nice and really warm, and we're trying to enjoy the sunshine. So we came down to the farm. We actually drove around, looked for some ducks, and there's no ducks. We're like, okay, what else can we hunt? It's hunting season, man. I want to hunt. I already shot a deer. It's not rival season anymore. So what else can we hunt? You can hunt rabbits, squirrels, raccoons. We've never done that before. Coyotes and crows. So we brought everything for all five of those species. We've got shotguns. We've got 22s. We've got ARs. We've got hunting rifles of all sorts, e-collars, decoys, we got it all. Everything is loaded up, and we've even got some trapping stuff too if we wanna go set some traps, but I mean like, we've got everything we need right here, as well as everything in the back. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna load up the mule, we're gonna head over to the Flare B&B 2.0 and walk from there to the original Flare B&B. We have to see a ton of rabbits over there, so we're gonna walk and try to push some rabbits. Slayman's gonna have the old 22 with the scope on it in case something goes far. I'm gonna have a shotgun in case something's close, and we're gonna push for that, and if that doesn't work, then we're gonna start going around to some of these other farms around here and seeing what we can find. If we can find squirrels, raccoons, rabbits, coyotes, or crows. That's the mission today. You guys stay tuned. Shoo! All right, well, I made it to the first spot here. This is what I'm talking about. Well kind of close to the flare b 2.0 but between here and the original flare beam this is just look straight up rabbit heaven we're looking for big chungus right only big chunguses are allowed here but there's so much cover for them and they've always bulled in here even before the flood even before it kind of looked like this there's always rabbits so we're gonna grab like I said, i'm gonna grab the shoddy slam's gonna be using the old 22 and we're gonna go do some walking see if we can scare out mr uh mr big chungus here big chungus Big chungus. Knock, knock, big chungus. Oh, dude, look at this thing. Sheesh. Old Bucky here. I didn't know that was here. Here, big chungus. Where you at, chungus? Look at all the raccoon poop, buddy. Shoo, should have been, should have got the calls out for this. Make sure I don't see any up in the rafters. All right. We walked through the barn, now it's time to walk through the grass. Nothing. I'll say we do one last pass, kind of where the, the old flare B&B is. If not, we need to go to another farm. I thought for sure we were gonna see one right there. I don't know, they're being all nocturnal or whatnot, but try one more spot and then we're moving. I don't see anything in the B&B. Still looks like a bag of wieners. All right, this spot's really good for rabbit. We'll walk that. If not, then uh, we're out of luck. Well, no chungus here. We're moving spots. Shoo! All right, folks, made it to the next spot. We're actually gonna start off this spot by doing a little raccoon cowling. Now, I don't even know how to do this. I tried to look it up, and all the videos showed like people hunting trees and stuff, which we might do after, but. As you guys can see right there, there's a giant old barn that we've actually, we've been to before. We've been there before and everybody that I basically talked about with raccoon calling, they're like, if you can find an old house, vacant house, like in the country, that's gonna be your best bet, which is very close to this. We have this and there's actually another vacant house that we know of that we can go to after this if this does not work. I know nothing about this. I don't know how far they run. I don't know if they care about me talking to the camera right now, if they can hear me. I don't know what's going on. We parked a, a fair distance, not crazy far away. Um, but what we're probably gonna do is we're gonna take the e-collar, we're gonna go put it outside of the barn in a little bit this side, and then we're gonna stand, we're gonna stand by those silos. So that way when they run out, they run like this. That way they're not really looking at us. I have no idea if that matters. I mean, we could crawl to the top of the silo and snipe them from there too if we want a vantage point. But we're just gonna try that. We'll see. I'm sure there's gotta be something in there. It's way too big of a barn not to have something. If not, we'll just go set it next to a tree row or something and try that instead and see if that works. But we're gonna be doing the one two punch again. I think I should use, I think the AR would probably knock them down pretty good. The 22, you know, you're gonna hit them, but I mean, you gotta hit them on a vital uh, versus a, a two, two, three pretty much you touch him he's gonna go boom um and then slam is gonna be back up with the old shotgun in case we get one running real close you know i i if it's basically in shotgun distance slam and should shoot if it's further than shotgun distance i'm gonna shoot that's the plan i'm kind of nervous i don't know if that's gonna work but you guys stay tuned uh, might want to throw a few more bolts in here i mean what if like what if a village of them comes out you know there's like 40 of them coming around out of the house gotta make sure you're loaded up again i don't have no idea this could be totally overkill 
or it could not be. Raccoons aren't, they're not like not hardy. I mean, I've shot raccoons with, like I've dispatched raccoons with 22s, but that's me taking point blank shots if they're in dog proof or something. I've never shot one on the run. I figure if I load this sucker up, got plenty of ammo, definitely a big enough bullet if, you know, if I do hit it, I think it would stop it in its tracks. We'll see, this could totally not work, or this could be like the new, newest, greatest thing ever. Locked and loaded, boys. Let's get after it. Like if we stuck it in a tree row and they were in the barn, would they run too, that far to it? Because if they would, that would be the deal. Because then you'd, you'd, we could just lay down in the grass or something. I just don't know how far they're willing to travel, you know? And I don't know how close we should get to the barn right now. I'd say we should sit here. I'll go put the car. Oh, look at all the pitch. Shoot. You can shoot some pitch too. Add that to the list. That's number six. We'll see if we can get them to run from the house out. If not, we'll just go inside. Alright. Got the call out. It's like 40 yards from us, 30 yards. We're just gonna hit play and see what happens. Either nothing's gonna happen, or all of a sudden a herd of raccoons are gonna come around the barn and it's just gonna be spraying prey time. Ladies ready? Raccoon distress. I was a little disappointed, not gonna lie. Didn't see any action, nothing nothing even like, I was glassing all the trees out in the distance, nothing, no movement, so. I say we just walk up on it. I mean, there might even be a rabbit too. That's the other thing, could be a rabbit, but we're just gonna walk, walk through that barn and see if there's anything inside. droppings I don't see much here the old raccoon poop they're just not home today not very exciting I guess we'll go to the next spot Shoo. all right made it to the next spot I'm trying to be quiet at this one there's an old house there and uh, like I said a lot of people were telling me old houses in the middle of the country that's uh, that's prime real estate for raccoon so we're gonna grab the the gun and the collar two guns and a collar try to get fairly close and uh, we'll see if this works I got a feeling this ain't gonna work but I hope it works all right we're all set up the house is here our call is there there's a barbed wire fence it's all the way but there's a break right here so they're gonna run down the house go five feet in front of us and meet Mr. Shotgun about you guys this just seems not it just don't seem right you know you don't you don't have that gut feeling like oh yeah it's about to work it just seems weird raccoons would wake up in the middle of the day and come running after a call i could just be really bad at this i probably should research this a little bit more but i mean with all the trees around here and all the cover and everything else maybe i maybe i'm being too loud maybe you got to be like it's just like cow dead quiet going in and everything maybe that's why i messed up i'm not sure yeah i'm not very good at raccoon hunting all right folks we're changing tactics we're going to do some coyote hunting this is the same spot I killed my first coyote ever. Last winter, it's like last December sometime. We've got a really good south wind, it's right in our face, which is good. I'm gonna go run, put the call over there, lay here, turn the call on, shoot a coyote. Right. You ready? Wow, we're really striking out here, Simon. Thought we were professional hunters, man. What the hell? Shoo! All right, well, way to the next spot. We're out here at the, the golden hour spot. This is where I shot my doe. This is where I shot a coyote last year. 
or this spring i think it was this spring we're gonna try coyote hunt first and then uh, there's a little timber stretch that we're gonna walk for rabbits and squirrels and stuff and then it'll pretty much be dark and come to the conclusion we suck at hunting but we're gonna try to kill coyote real quick you guys stay tuned all right just gotta set up let's make some magic happen Nothing. Not zero. Zilch. There's no deer. There's no coyotes. There's no crows. Haven't seen a squirrel or rabbit. Saw a pigeon. It's about the only thing we've really seen today. Which time we got for sunset? About 30 minutes. I say we jump in the mule and run down and uh, walk this timber line for a squirrel or a rabbit. And if we don't get anything then, then uh, we're just out of luck. Phew. All right. Final, final attempt is squirrel and rabbit hunting. This little, this just stretch. You can see this is all perfect for rabbits and then the trees are obviously perfect for squirrels it's getting dark we can't really see a whole lot so we're just going to try to walk fairly quickly and if i see something i'm shooting at it and hopefully i, I get it down on the ground wow just slamming this is one of the biggest l's we've taken man we hunted everything we got a little bit of late start. I mean, we only hunted for, we got out here on three. Right now it's about five o'clock sunset. Two, two and a half hours isn't a terrible amount of time, but we covered a lot of ground. It's like five different farms, hunted like nine different species, nothing. Well, see you guys tomorrow. Shoo, how's it going folks? How's it going, Millie? It's the next day. We are, uh, I'm with John now, traded out slamming for John and uh, we brought Millie. Figured we're gonna do a little backyard squirrel hunt again. It worked really well the first time that uh, Millie and I did it. We got one, didn't we? Yeah. Right now we're headed down. There's a tree line up here, and then we're pretty much just gonna try to squirrel hunt. Backyard squirrel hunt, maybe even a catch and cook. Since Slayman and I absolutely suck at ba basically everything at the farm, we're gonna try to do something in the backyard. You guys stay tuned. Shoo! All right, well, we made it down to the pond. We didn't see any squirrels. Walked a little bit again. I'm sure you guys saw lots of footage of us walking around doing not a whole lot. But look, the pond's frozen. Johnny, you think we could? Dude, it actually looks pretty thick. It actually like like a, like maybe two or three C's. Honestly, it doesn't really look that bad. I feel like we could probably. Should I give it a test here? Rip, Mel. Okay, well, can't go in there. Do you think there's a spot we could actually access, or do you think it's all soft? I think there might be some spots we could probably go in at. Yeah, you gotta, what is that thing? This is a hoe. <laughs> okay. Right? Uh, no, that's like the raking thing. Oh, well, that's it's, an ice ice, it's ice an ice pick. pick it's an yeah. ice chisel today. How many inches do you think we have? One? Right here. Dude, I feel like out there though, it can't be, like, the edges are that's always gonna good. be soft. Like, see? You can, we that's can definitely good. walk on it's that. Th there's gonna, it's gonna be thicker and thinner in some spots. So yeah. you just gotta like, kinda like, choose your spot wisely, yeah. you know? Dude, we should've brought the ice fishing stuff. Millie, we could go ice fishing today, buddy. How, how would that make you feel? Not 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 that good. I feel like we could do it. Honestly, if, as dumb as this sounds, do you think if I j ran and jumped, uh, that sounds bad, but like get past the soft stuff, the problem is getting back, I guess. True. I mean, the more I'm looking at, the more I'm thinking, bro, we could we could run up top and get our ice fishing stuff. I just want to make sure we're, dude, look out. Oh, that's easily two inches, Yeah. two and a half. Oh yeah. I think we can fish. We just need to find a, uh, an access point. And there's, oh dude, there's a bunch of, dude, do you think those are coyote trails? Or do you think they're deer? You see them? Dude, if they're, we have to find out. I have to find out. Because if they're coyotes, bro, we gotta start figuring out where they're coming from. We gotta start trapping. We've been sending coyote traps with no luck. Anyways, dude, I, yeah, see, dude, it's it's thick out there. I feel like it's just the edge. If I can get yeah, past, if I can get past the edge, I think I'll be good. fine. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find a good spot and just kind of go test it out there. If it's good enough, I think we should go ice fishing uh, today. We haven't, we haven't gone ice fishing in the pond ever. And early ice is always fire for some reason. It's just like right when it freezes, all the fish start eating. We gotta see if we can find a good access point here that we don't, won't fall in at. All right, well, here we go, folks. This is the moment we gotta test the ice. We've got this thing though. These are, these, what are these called, ice picks, Johnny? Okay, jo we yeah. went to Johnny's car real quick and got these ice picks. They're these metal things. So if you fall in, you can, pull yourself up like this except i have not been I, i've been kind of lacking on the rows you know row day at the gym so i just don't know if my back is going to be strong enough to do it but you know what we're going to find out we're going to go step on the ice and see if there's i guess fishable ice um there are some soft spots though i'm seeing i'm seeing a few soft spots and john's trying to convince me to do a video that shows you guys how to get out of the ice if you fall through um but 
I mainly want to see if there's any safe ice. John wants to see me fall through the ice. What I wish more than anything is Bonzo was here to make him go fall through the ice, um, but unfortunately he's not. So I guess I'm gonna go walk out here and see if it's fishable. If I fall through, I guess I'll try to remain calm and teach you guys something, but here goes nothing. Bro, this is sketch. Oh God. Millie, stay back. So far, so good, boys. Dude, I feel like we could fish out here. How deep do you think it is? It's like a soft spot right here. Oh God, did you hear that crack, bro? I'm scared, dude. Don't do this at home, folks, all right? Don't do it. Ah, feels like maybe like two, two inches or something or so. You want me to fall in? I gotta teach the folks something. Problem is, I've only fallen in one time and I didn't even have ice picks. Oh no, I don't like this. Dad, I don't like this dude. I don't want to fall in, John. Like, you think I should make a big enough hole I could slip in? That's a pretty big hole. Yeah. Or just start jumping. Let's give it a little. Wish, I wish you could throw something. That would be awesome. I've never contemplated something more in my life. I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. Oh, yep. It's gonna do it, bro. No, I'm Did scared. You see, the, you see the circle it made? I'm scared. <laughs> Dude, I just, I just want to ice fish, Dad. I don't want to do this. <laughs> All right. You gotta early, oh dude, this mud. Oh no, my boot, my boot's stuck, bro. I can't get my boot off. <laughs> okay, I got one out. Okay, okay. <laughs> dude, this hole is tiny. I can't even get my legs out. I got one leg out. Okay. <laughs> that was the dumbest thing I've ever done, dude. I can't feel my legs. I've never not been able to feel my legs. It's completely numb. That was not a good idea. Oh, hey, how's it going, folks? This is what happens when you uh, make YouTube videos for a living and uh, you don't kill anything. You fall through the ice. Well, I would say maybe the next episode you guys watch is us ice fishing because I think as long as you're not an idiot like me and make a hole fall in, I don't think you'll fall through. That's how you get out of it, I guess. Time to go inside. Shee hee hee. Well, folks, um, been about 30 minutes. Your boy is dry and uh, looking good in the Crocs. And uh, we're back up top at the house. Went inside, I showered. Uh, legs feel weird. I'm not, I don't really know how to describe it. I mean, I'm sure if you guys take ice baths and you're athletes and stuff, you'd probably be, you'd probably know what I'm talking about. But it's like, uh, I don't know, at some point on my drive back, I got really warm. Like my legs weren't really cold or anything, which is kind of odd. And then like right now, like when I got in the shower, just it just feels weird. I'm just, I don't really know how to explain it. Just legs are just feeling kind of odd, but I guess, like I said, this is what you do when you can't kill anything. For your guys' enjoyment, obviously, you know, it, I don't condone ice fishing on super thin ice. Like, we're on my private pond where you know, we've got access to UTVs and, you know, we can obviously call 911 if something happens. Not saying that that's an excuse to do it, but we also knew it wasn't like incredibly deep. I was not about to go do that in super deep water because then it's really risky because if I'm unable to kind of pull myself back up, you die versus the shallow water Worst case, John could have just gotten in the mule and just ramped it into the pond and broken up all the ice and came and saved me. So, I mean, that actually would have been a better video, honestly. I would have liked to see that. If you would have just like, if I would have just been like, John, just go get the mule and you just would have just ran in there and just busted it all up, ruined the mule, but saved me, True. which is the important, important thing of that. Anyways, if you guys want to actually know how to like survive an ice fall, there's probably a lot better videos on YouTube, I would imagine. So I would suggest not going off of mine. I mean, I did the right thing. You kind of calm yourself, you relax, take your picks. The hole was so small, I couldn't get my legs out of the hole. So it's like, I got one out, got one the other one out, laid on there, and you don't want to try to stand back up. That's one thing that I did not do and that I know not to do is, even though I was already out, don't stand back up because then your weight is supporting on just your feet versus like this, it's evenly distributed. And so I stayed on my belly until I got up to shore and that's what you're supposed to do. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and peace.